Obey. Consume. Obey. Consume. Obey. Consume. In honor of Roddy Piper's birthday today, we are in memoriam here of They Live, which is gone, but lives on in our hearts. Gone? How can a movie be gone? Like how many people you know these days know about They Live? Dude, like everyone! Really? Well, good. Like, I... Alright, we'll start We're again. done with this! We're done, we'll start again. God! God, I hate you! Anyways, so... As much as we would love to talk about everyone's favorite wrestling Scotsman, we have comics! Uh, speaking of wrestling, actually, uh... We have the first issue of the new Rocket Raccoon ongoing series. Um, the probably breakout star of the new Guardians of the Galaxy movie, because, I mean, he's a talking raccoon with a gun. Um, and he hangs out with a tree. Yeah, and which he hangs talks out with too, a tree. But... Who, in this issue, is wrestling a giant tentacle beast for the champion of the universe. Um, but that's not really important to the story. What's important is that Rocket Raccoon now has an army of evil ex-girlfriends to deal with. Wait, so, is this Scott Pilgrim? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Just think of Scott Pilgrim in space with more fur. Okay. Yeah. Alright. Uh, and to follow that up as well, if there wasn't enough fur in there, um, we have the team-up issue where Rocket Raccoon and Groot go around, cause trouble, large guns. Yeah, it's yeah. also got a really nice uh, reprint and it's also of an old by... Thor story. Yes. With, uh, I believe that was Rocket Raccoon's first, like, main Marvel continuity appearance. Uh, this is Drax in here. Does he show up in Rocket Raccoon? I'm pretty sure. He might. Um, but yes. Or is that a Hulk issue? I think might that's, be you know, that's my a Hulk issue. guys confused. Yeah, see, no, I think you're wrong on that one. Um, but yeah, if you need more Guardians of the Galaxy action to prime you before August, that is that. <laughs> Ooh. More, uh, cool, kind of weird sci-fi stuff here. We've talked a lot about Ed Brisson and Simon Roy's The Field, but in this third issue, after the, uh, the sci-fi elements were really cranked up in the last issue, and while, you know, the story came from slightly dubious sources, if it continues in that vein, we're in for some really, really weird stuff, past just the normal Tarantino-esque blood and gore and foul-mouthed weirdness. Uh, yeah. It's and awesome. isn't it Canadian Day today? Or Canada Canadian? Day? I think so. Tomorrow? Yeah. I don't know. Canada well, day? Why does Canada get its own day? Well, if you were Canadian, you'd want your own day, too, probably. True. You know, so it's Canada Day, and uh, they're Canadian. So, yeah, yeah for Canadian comics. There's also nerds with knives in this, and they shoot people, too. Yeah, well, there you go. Um... From local publisher Fanographics, we have Ditko Kirby Wood, uh... Which is a really, you know, I thought this was just going to be, uh, you know, a Kirby issue, a Dicko issue, a Wood issue. This is a really nice kind of melding of the three and of one artist's, this kind of fledgling artist, his um, coming to learn about them through a mentor artist, uh, which is really cool. Uh, so it's Sergio P uh, Poncione, and uh, it's got this really nice kind of like sepia colored stuff. There's some really great Dicko uh, panels, some Kirby panels. And uh, it just does a really good job of paying homage to three of the greatest comic artists ever to live. None of which were Canadian, though. Yeah, well, you know, whatever. That's yeah. why they pioneered American comics, That's not right. Canadian comics. No. Um, but we're just going to sit here and think about those three greats while we toss it on over to Will. Uh, he's got... You know, the usual to tell you about, and maybe something that's not Marvel. Who knows? Mm, maybe. Thanks, guys. And since it's 4th of July week, let's start with the all-American action of Superman Unchained. Um, this is the latest issue from Superstar Scott Snyder and Jim Lee. And it's Superman. And it's Batman. And it's Wonder Woman. And it's they battle in the Batcave as they take on the Man of Tomorrow, the weird Superman doppelganger creation called Wraith. Um, they're building up to their big finale. This is really awesome. Um, and all these secrets that uh, Lois Lane's father is involved with this secret science group. And just a lot of action. It's basically the big three icons of DC versus the ultimate, maybe even more badass than Superman. There you go. Uh, Original Sin 5. You know, Nick Fury is a man who's lived his life of secrets. But now we're learning he's had a whole other secret, crazy freaking history and career. Um, 
that we never even knew about. Jason Aaron and Mike Diodato are covering um, more in Original Sin 5. There's been all kinds of shocks. It started with the death of the Watcher, then all these weird like aliens and monsters uh, killed all in space and in Earth, and it led to a bizarre thing with incident with the Winter Soldier and Nick Fury. And then of course there was another big cliffhanger. I don't want to give it away, but just to say that what you thought you knew about Nick Fury is crazy, and it's a whole other group of aliens and weird conspiracies that we never knew of to now. It's being uncovered. Original Sin 5, Marvel's big event. Uh, Black Widow, number 8. I love this book. I've said it before when it comes out. It's still probably my all new, my favorite of the all-new Marvel Now books. Uh, Nathan Evans and Phil Noto. Okay, here's the thing. As you know, in Ed Brubaker's amazing uh, last year on Winter Soldier, um, the great, hot, action-packed lovers that are Winter Soldier and Black Widow. When it ended, she had her memories erased. She doesn't know they were an item. He still does. What happens when her undercover missions lead to a conclude into a uh, running with the Winter Soldier? Will they get back together? Will they kill each other? Who knows? Uh, great book. And uh, you know, you've heard about the Guardians of the Galaxy. There's a uh, one a big movie coming out this year, and there's a lot some Guardians of the Galaxy books this week. Um, I'm going to do Legend Legendary Star Lord number one from Sam Humphreys to Paco Medina. Um, he is half alien, half Earth man, and all cool troublemaker in space. Uh, this kind of talks about his um, solo adventures as a pirate and coming to terms with his past. There's crazy alien Badoon and um, some weird. Um, there's a weird cliffhanger involving a member of uh, his long lost family he may or may not know he had. Really, really cool stuff. Uh, Sam Humphreys, Paco Medina, Legendary Star Lord number one. And finally, um, let's blast back to the 1990s. It is Deadpool versus X Force. Yes, um, you know, it's Deadpool, so anything can happen. Um, it all begins with Benjamin Franklin, and, and next thing you know, it's back in the 90s, and why is Deadpool going up against Cable and Warpath and Domino and Boom Boom and all the great um, big guns, big muscles, big pouches? Um, it's Deadpool vs. X-Force 104 special uh, limited series full of 90s action for you. So, uh, those are my picks this week. Back to you guys and have a happy 4th of July weekend, everyone. Enjoy some comics. Ah! It's an alien! That's him! He's, he's the alien! He's the one that's been lying to you! Dude, you've known this! Oh, right. I don't even know why I paid. I paid like 50 bucks for these things. I got them on the back of a comic book, and they were like, see the aliens, and I put them on, and of course... And that's consumerism at work. It is consumerism <laughs> at work. <laughs> you know, things to consume. <laughs> wow, how about some more comics? We like comics, We do right? like comic books. Uh, and funny enough, uh, this one has a food name. Haha, <laughs> consume, get it? Wow, uh, I hate myself. But anyways, things I don't hate, wonton soup. Well, yeah, the soup and the comic. Um... Yeah, this one ton soup does not come with this comic. I wish. <laughs> Although if you pay me, I might make you some soup. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, but this is the entirety of James Stokoe, another Canadian, another great Canadian's. Uh, Exiled Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> His two-volume manga-esque series from Oni Press. It's so amazing. Oh, I just want to rub it. It's got space food recipes. Don't look at me like that. Space food recipes. Um, this stuff has been out of print for a couple years now actually. Um, it's got a really great intro by Brandon Graham. If you've been enjoying the Godzilla that he did, or Orkstein, um, yeah. Yeah, you want to check out his roots, his earlier Absolutely. Work. Absolutely. And he, uh, Johnny Boyo teams up with this dude, Deacon, who will oomph anything. Anything! There's very strange interracial stuffs in this. Sex cow. Yeah. That's all you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even, I have to take a break and ponder the sex cow for a minute. And we're going to send it to Anna, who hopefully will not be talking about sexual animals. Ah, uh, sex cow. Since it is a very special happy birthday to everyone's favorite wrestler, Roddy Roddy Piper, this started off with some Southern Bastards by the wonderful Jasons. Because uh, this is brutal, it's fighting, it's cool one-liners, it's uh, the most Southern name in the world, Esau. Who doesn't want to beat up someone named Esau? The new Southern Bastards, it's great. We also have the second trade paperback out from Five Ghosts, Frank Barbary, Chris Mooneyham. This is wrapping up the Lost Coastlines adventure where they're hitting the high seas, going to Japan, hitting those, uh, those islands that have a lot of mystery and treasures going on, as well as the classic pirate chases that you love in all your pulp comics, which this does at its best. Second volume, pick it up. 
We also have the new series of the Eleven Rockets Library, the completest collection you'll ever get of any Eleven Rockets collection ever. These collect the books more on content than on their chronological order. This is Luba and her family from Gilbert Hernandez. It follows Luba and her family after they emigrate from the famed Palomar town to the United States, and she really takes up her mantle as the matriarch of Gilbert's contribution to the Levin Rockets decades spanning family saga. It has Venus, it has all of her daughters, all of her sisters. It's Luba's amazing. She's a hard-earned matriarch. This is a great book. My favorite book this week. So excited. 12 Gems by Lane Milburn, also out from Fanographics. It's like if your high school composition notebook met the latest 75 issue of Heavy Metal Magazine, you get 12 Gems, where Furs and Venus and her companion Dog Star set out on a mission for Dr. Z to collect the famed 12 Gems of Power. But anyone named Dr. Z probably isn't that trustworthy, and they have to decide what to do with the gems after they collect them on their hair-raising adventures. It's great, it's funny, sci-fi, pick it up. Thanks. In honor of buying things for a dollar, such as Sex Cow, which I would buy for a dollar, Robocop, number one, by uh, Joshua Williamson and Carlos Magno. I have been aching and yearning for a really awesome Robocop comic, actively aching and yearning and hopefully this will be it and they learned really well you got Carlos Magno who's doing this kind of Juan Jose Rip thing and it opens with gunfire that's right and there's face punching and eyeballs that go into places and all sorts of awesome Robocop action to wash the taste of the new movie out of your mouth and uh, yeah it's got a really nice cover new ongoing also came out this week Robocop versus Terminator hardcover yeah yeah well Simon Frank and Frank Miller Probably the best movie tie-in comic ever, besides ever. that other Walt Simonson movie tie-in comic. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, speaking of movie tie-in comics, ha ha ha, I wasn't trying to bash on this or anything, because no. that's also awesome. It's also uh, by John Carpenter. Yeah, we have the second issue of Big Trouble in Little China by Eric Powell and Brian Shuria, um, where Jack Burton has been tasked with tracking down the souls of the three Raiden-looking guys from the first movie. You know the ones. You know them. The three Storms! Yeah, those guys. That's right. Uh, so he, of course, has to team up with Egg Shen and the Chinese Gorilla Man to go and woo out this giant cool temple. Yeah. Wow, I'm just gonna look at this for a bit. Hold on. First issue sold out super fast, out of print. Make sure you come in and get this one. God, it's pretty Um... From Dark Horse Comics, we have the excellently awaited collection of Catalyst Comics, uh, Ulysses Farinas, um, Dan, D or, uh, Dan, Dan McDade, McDade Paul Mayberry, Dave. and Joe Casey at the helm here. Super amazing uh, superhero comics, pretty much. Yeah, this it is was a sort of reinvention of yeah. Dark Horse's 90s uh, comics greatest world properties. Yeah. Um, and it's got glam rock gangsters, it's got uh, existential superhero stuff, and it keeps it in the order you were supposed to read it, which is chopped up little bits. So. Mm -hmm. Alright, speaking of sort of reinventing superheroes, uh, Marvel has decided to start its 100th anniversary event, and no, you don't have as bad of a sense of time as I do. This is not actually 100 years after Marvel started publishing. No. Uh, this is actually, I believe we're approaching the 50th anniversary of... I, I thought it was like 60. I don't 60? know. Something like that. They, they just decided to off. jump ahead to their 100th anniversary because yeah. why not? DC did it like 10 years ago. They should be doing it now. Uh, and this is the Fantastic Four anniversary issue where three out of four members, besides everyone but the Thing, has disappeared and he has started a new Fantastic Four with uh, the help of the Banner... Oh gosh, the Banner Walters twins or something? No, that would be weird. That would be that so would be weird. Super weird. Oh god, forget I even said anything. There right. are twins. One of them's a Hulk. One of them's not. Fun future stuff. <laughs> Doctor Doom has a Joe Casey mask. I mean Joe Casey. Casey Jones. Casey Jones mask. <laughs> we are a Joe mess Casey right now. It's the heat getting to it's us. It's the heat, man. Oh. If you can see the heat lines. I got anime sweat drops going right. on. Me. And lastly, we have uh, from Mr. Mark Wade and Peter Kraus. Um, Daredevil, 0 0.1. Again, they're just throwing numbering out the window here. They did 1, and then 1.5, and then 2, and then 3, and now 0. 
point one. Yeah, whatever. That collects the uh, it's the digital first Road Warrior series All chronicling right. Daredevil's move from New York to San Francisco. It was kind of an abrupt jump between it ongoings. Was kind of an abrupt jump. But you know, now about four months after the fact, we have this great one shot to fill the gap. That's right. So. Yeah, Mark Wade is again teaming with uh, Peter Krause, who he worked on Irredeemable with. Indeed. Great team there. So that's about all we have. Um, and remember to obey, consume, and watch out for guys like you.